reaction going on inside. Okay? There has to be some reaction coming out of it. So that's well and good. So I would like to facilitate in a manner that you can go ahead with all that, you know, agitation which is going on in each, in each one of you. So I, from my side, you know, on the one hand, you know, take all this, you know, kind of reaction or you know, many things which comes as, a, you know, a sinful uh, in a thing in the process. And second, I try to facilitate that, you know, as minimum as this kind of discomfort is there in you. So I try to place things, you know, in a manner that you can see what was your, you know, belief before and how it can be placed here. So, similarly, this issue of religion. I would say that all religions, okay, the aim, the objective, of any religion has been how human beings you know, can live okay, with the fulfillment of their purpose for one, for many, for everyone. That has been the purpose of all the religions, right? the goal, the target of all the religions. Okay. Fulfillment of human goal. Fulfillment of you know, what is human target. And that is why we have started our discussion by identifying this human desire, the human purpose. Right? So we are trying to identify the human purpose. And then we are trying to identify the program of action to ensure this fulfillment of the human purpose. Right? This has been the purpose of all the religions. What, what do you think? Is that the purpose or something else? Well being of all, right? Sub su ho. Sabka ho. It is well being of all. Every human being must be happy. Every human being must be healthy, right? right? Every human being must be thinking good of the other, right? The love, the compassion, right? All this, what does it mean? It means that we can live like human beings, right? And fulfill our purpose. And this is what we are trying to do here. Right? And we are saying that don't take them as beliefs, right? Don't take them as deconditioning, presumptions. Do this exploration within your own self and find out whether it is true for you or not true for you. And I also mentioned that if you don't do this, you are not, not authentic about it. And if you are not authentic about it, right, you will have a lot of doubt while doing it. Number one. Number two, when you have to communicate to the children, the next generation, you will find it difficult. If you do it through your self verification, you, know, you will be authentic. So you can do with that authenticity, you know, things with authenticity. And then you can also explain to the next generation. And what has happened with most of our, you know, good traditions in the past is that we are not authentic about it. Therefore, any new culture, however inferior it may be, okay, is able to influence us. Okay? That is one thing. Second, we are not able to pass it on to our next generation. So our next generation is influenced in the present context by the Western culture. Okay? And we are not able to you know, communicate to our children about our way of living. Because we are not ourselves, you know, understood it, we are not authentic about it. And we also get affected. So, we are talking about what was the purpose of any religion and how it can be fulfilled. So that is my opinion about religion. Okay.
religion is a human enterprise, you know, trying to ensure the well-being of everyone. So first we try, what is this well-being of everyone? We identified it as happiness and prosperity in its continuity. And then we are trying to find out how it can be ensured. When you said uh, you have to investigate the author, what I was uh, investigating, uh, I get the feeling that uh, when we are, you know, telling ourselves that uh, this is the intention of self. I want to make myself happy. I want to uh, make others happy. But uh, when we are like ex uh, investigating, is something that's quick stealing the self? Yeah, this is wrong and uh, this is uh, uh, right. So I, was, uh, I get the feeling there's something else which is telling oneself. So is there another self, uh, is that within the self? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the very first day, when you said what you are and what is naturally acceptable to you, whether they are the same thing or different things. Whether there is a harmony between the two or there is a contradiction between the two. Right? From there we start a discussion. So if you look at it, you will realize that these are the activity of the self and this is also the activity of the self. Right? These desire, thought and expectations can be guided by the preconditioning from outside, sensation from outside, or from my natural acceptance from within. Right? So essentially all that I need to do is that instead of doing this on the basis of this input from outside here and here, I can start looking into my own self, right? This natural acceptance which is intact, which is invariant, which is you know universal and which is there in me, I can start listening to it and base my desire, thought and expectation on the basis of this. If that happens, I am in harmony with it and I am in a state of happiness. So this natural acceptance which keeps telling me what is right, what is not right, is also a part of me. You know? This desire, thought and expectation is also a part of me. When I start investigating into myself, I can understand this. I can also understand this. If I understand both, then slowly this will start lining up with this. That is all that is required to be done. If that happens, there is harmony in the self. And I am in a state of happiness. But what we have been doing mostly is, we have been referring to one outside. To the preconditioning or to the sensation. And on the basis of these two, we are you know, trying to mold this. For example, the whole of our education system, what is it doing? Is it working through this and this, or it is working through this? So it is working either through this or through this. What we have been doing for the last few days is we have opened up this channel. Right? asking yourself about your natural acceptance, right? And then basing your desire, thought, expectation on this natural acceptance. So of course, there is one part of you which keeps telling you what is right, what is not right. And what you are doing is you are not paying attention to it. Right? What we are saying is start paying attention to it. And not that, you know, you accumulate a lot of this and then you start paying attention to it. It is better that you start with paying attention to it. Right? And then, you know, mold your desire, thought, expectation in accordance with this. That will ensure the harmony within. Now, with this context, you know, this we can clarify that if the desire, thought and expectation of the other person is in accordance with his natural acceptance, right? then he will have the right competence. 
If it is not based on this, his natural acceptance is something else. Right? His competence is something else. And because this is not based on this, you kind of, you find all kind of problems in the people today. Right? And that is the problem of competence. So I have to look into my natural acceptance, 1A and 2A. If I can really understand myself and my natural acceptance, I can also see that the other human being is like me. Everybody, hundred people sitting here, right, is like me. My natural acceptance and their natural acceptance is the same. This 3A and 4A which I ask about you from my side will be 1A and 2A from your side. So in that sense, all of us have the natural acceptance, be happy and make others happy. But when it comes to competence, right, we are dumped with so many of the conditionings that we might be thinking even to kill others. Right? Leave it on making him happy. <laughs> we have been thinking, that is how we have been killing each other. So the competence problem is there, but I can at least be sure about the intention part. And I was saying that if I am clear about the intention part, it makes all the difference in the society, you know, in your relationship. It makes all the difference in your relationship. And I keep taking one example, you know, to demonstrate this, that in one of my friends, you know, very kind of respected family in Kanpur, so his father met a heart attack. He was taken to the hospital right? and the hospital in Kanpur and when he came back after you know, getting cured, yeah. I went to meet him and you know we are very you know, kind of friendly. So I was asking him, you know, uncle what happened to you? He said, you know, you know, your auntie sometimes she says certain things, is very hurting. <laughs> and that day one of my friends had come from Calcutta, you know, seeking for some help. Okay. And I committed him some help. And when he, she heard about it and she was very unhappy. And he said words which were really hurting for me. And that caused me a heart attack. <laughs> now these people, 50 years living together as husband and wife, a very respected family. So I asked, what do you think uncle? You got hurt by way of what words she used or because you started doubting her intention on the basis of this. He said, no, no, because the words she said. So I said, okay, let me ask one more question. If the same words were uttered by someone whom you knew, knew is mad, will you feel her? He said no. Now that means it is not that the words which hurt you. <laughs> it is because that on the basis of the words she said, you doubted her intention. You thought that she wants to hurt you. This doubt or intention is what has created this hurt, right? I mean, if you take another example, if the same words are uttered by the radio, you will not feel hurt, right? <laughs> so, essentially, on the basis of this, <coughs> you have concluded about her intention, and this is hurting for you. So, he was very silent for five minutes, and then he said, it makes sense. <laughs> what you are saying, you know, makes sense. But just imagine, 50 years we are living together as husband and wife, right? And we have not established this trust on intention. Right? If we had that trust on intention, you could have seen that because of the lack of competence, right? She is getting trouble and she is also troubling me. 
If that clarity was there, you would have got hurt. It wouldn't have caused him an heart attack. Right? So simple. Okay. And this is a slight difference. You know, this, you know, the capacity to see the intention of the other or the natural acceptance of the other and the competence of the other. If I can see this difference, then I can have trust on intention of everybody. Right? And every time I'm interacting with him, I'll continue to evaluate my competence and his competence. So if this uncle and not would have done that, right, you would have had this trust on intention of the wife, right, of the auntie. And if she is doing something which is not proper, not appropriate, you would have been able to, you know, kind of evaluate it as a lack of competence. Then he would have tried to help him, you know, how to improve the competence, or at least he wouldn't have got hurt, got it. But this is what is happening. Every relation, you can see, right, slight problem due to the lack of competence, right? You immediately start doubting the intention. Now, when you start doubting the intention, then it is big trouble. Then you start interpreting everything otherwise. When you start doubting the intention, then you will start interpreting everything otherwise. And how this has come? Because of the lack of competence. But if I had this clarity about the trust and intention, right, then every time something happens, I will evaluate my competence, I will evaluate his competence and decide what to do with it. Continuing with this trust on intention. And that is significant. Because then I can I can continue to have trust on intention. Therefore that fifty years they will have two meters of competence. Yes. It's a long time. <laughs> I was also feeling that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Uncle G, there must be some and then the wish was not openly mentioned to him. You try to say something, but you mean something. Intimately, but uh, not valorized. Uh, so I was thinking, 15 years staying together and one girl had to be getting strong. And it was uh, <laughs> something to clarify on my job. <laughs> <laughs> Again, still uh, uh, look at much deeper level than this. Because we are assuming here, I as a separate entity. You feel I so strongly that I must do this. No, she should not have said this. That I must trust in her intuition. So all these things makes I self so stronger, so stronger. And the people get heart attacks because that you seriously, strongly feel that this is mine and I should not be said like me by others. I am like that feeling of I. And everything that what you have been discussing here is based on the I. Therefore, the focus on the I, not the dissection of the I. <coughs> For the real understanding of the reality of the system, very, very important. This is what I feel here. Because everything begins from the eye. Everything begins from the eye. Even if, uh, now, looking at the level of the self uh, coexistence, self and body, so if you leave it in there, still problems are going to be, uh, there will be problems, but not much with after I think this one. But I think we need to further basic self-time. That is the confusion that I think that I 
things that when people uh, talk about this self, the existence of the self. So if you do not understand the existence of the self, you tend to feel that I exist so strongly and then, then you begin that this is mine, this is mine. I'm coming back to the statement of consciousness. No, no, I'm not going to talk to the consciousness, but I'm just uh, talking about the religious. But I think here, uh, the, when we talk about the religious, race, language, country, I think it divides all of us. So this should be kept as a separate or a secondary level. Primary level, we are all human beings. We have the same, same emotions. Physically, we are same. Mentally, I think we are all same. I think, so from that level, we need to explore and then develop some kind of understanding. Because if we come home and we bring in such kind of a region, I think that should be left as the individual self. How we can do it. Uh, uh, then uh, when we bring religion, then uh, it becomes difficult for, because many people of us, many of us have a different mental disposition. So some may suit with the uh, Christianity, some may suit with the uh, Hindu, Jainism, Buddhism. So that I think is a, we can leave it as a secondary and then primarily and fundamentally we have to recognize that we are all human beings and what we need to understand is the self. Yeah. The self. Two besides. Scientific way of approach. Logical. Scientifically. This has to be proven. By exploring. I think then I think a problem Okay, <laughs> so this is what we are doing essentially, that we are trying to explore into human existence right? on our own right in a very systematic manner, trying to unfold right? things one by one starting from the individual level to family to society and finally we will go to the level of nature and nature. So we can explore into all this, each of these levels in a very systematic manner. I call it systematic, not scientific because science has a very specified domain of material world. I would call it systematically. So we are systematically trying to investigate into the material world. We are systematically trying to investigate into the world of consciousness. Right? And finally we will also try to investigate into what we call as a space, right? which is also a reality, about which we have not mentioned as yet. So we will try to investigate into the world of material. Right? That's what we are doing. We are trying to investigate into the world of consciousness. And finally we will also investigate into the space, right? which is also a reality. So, yes, we are doing it and doing it in a systematic manner and through this process of self-exploration, through this process of self-investigation. And the good thing about it is that Everybody can do it in his own right. In that sense, the process is subjective. But the result we get out of this is objective, is universal, is applicable to all of us. And I was mentioning that it is in this sense that it is possible for us to take it to education. Because the results are objective, you know, it is universal. Therefore, it can be taken to everyone through education. So the process is subjective, it is a systematic self-exploration. 
and therefore it is subjective in nature. But the result that we get out of this you know, exploration is objective in nature, is universal in nature. And therefore, it can be taken to education. So let me you know, sum this up, you know, this issue of trust, and then we will proceed to discuss about this feeling of respect. So trust, I said, is this feeling of being assured of the other. And this assurance comes when I have the clarity that the other wants to make me happy and prosperous. Now if I do this investigation into my natural acceptance and the natural acceptance of the other, and similarly if I do this investigation into my competence and the competence of the other, and I do it in a proper manner, then it turns out that my natural acceptance is to be happy and make others happy. And similarly the other's natural acceptance is to be happy and make others happy. That is, I can put this tick mark on this 4A. Because this 3A and 4A is just the reflection of 1A and 2A. If that happens, then I will have the trust on the natural acceptance, and that is what I am calling as intention. You know, I will have trust on natural acceptance of every human being. Right? All hundred people sitting here at least can you know, ensure this. But when it comes to making a program with the other person, I will evaluate my competence. I will evaluate the competence of the other and make a program on the basis of that. And by doing this, I will certainly try to improve my competence and also be a help to improve the competence of the other. This is what I would do. This is what I would do. And if that trust on intention is there, right, then only I feel that the other is related to me or I am related to the other. In that sense, this feeling of trust is the foundation of relationship. So that is why we call this trust as the foundation value. So it is the foundation of relationship. And you can see, if there is doubt on intention, the moment there is a doubt on intention, what will happen? The whole relationship becomes threatening. The very doubt on intention makes your relationship very shaky. Right? And you are stuck with it. So if there is any doubt on intention, right, there is problem, you know, the whole relationship starts shaking. And therefore, any crack here, it can cause an explosion in your relationship. Right? One of my friends, one word, I was mentioning about this, conducting it in Telugu, right? He is an expert on earthquakes. So when he went through this process, like now whenever he conducts a seminar you know, on earthquakes, he says half of the time I will spend discussing on the earthquake which is taking place on the earth. And 50% I will talk about the earthquake which is taking place in relationship. <laughs> because that is more important. So much of you know, uh, you know, disturbance, so much of damage is done due to the earthquake which is taking place in relationship. And what is the reason of it? There is a doubt on intention. There is a doubt on the natural acceptance of the other. So if there is a knee crack here, it will propagate and it can cause explosion in the relationship. 
It can cause an heart attack. Even after 50 years. In fact, I asked this question very purposely. How many people you have trust and intention unconditionally? 